If you are listening to today's podcast, I'm going to assume that you are someone who struggles to lose weight and maybe have done for a number of years, or potentially you've just come off the back of summer and you put on a little bit of weight after enjoying yourself on holidays and social occasions and you want to lose it as fast as possible. Now, I've covered many frameworks and trainings around how to drop fat and lose weight, but I believe today's is going to be one of the most simplistic and logical mini frameworks that I believe will make sure that you lose weight in the most simplistic manner. I think so many people overcomplicate what it actually takes to lose weight slash fat. You've probably heard over and over again that it's calorie deficit. Move more, eat less. That might be great in theory, but if you are someone who has struggled for a number of years and yo-yoed maybe even this year with your weight and shape, that advice is flawed if you don't actually know how to simplify logically implementing what you need to eat and how much you need to move. So the title of this episode is A Fast Foolproof Guide to Losing Weight Faster. And hopefully in this very short Kirtner podcast episode, this is going to help you do that. Now, what I'm also going to invite you to do after this podcast episode is drop me a message on Instagram. And if I don't see it, because that can happen sometimes, I get a lot of messages. Sometimes it goes into a different folder. Please just comment on one of my pictures or videos, basically my main posts and I will then DM you with a small gift at the end of, after listening to this podcast episode. Because the thing, the things I'm going to go through today are from a recent training I did for our Built to Last community. We have monthly content pipeline where I deliver a couple of trainings per month alongside my team to educate our clients on what they need to do to stay in shape all year round alongside our one-to-one accountability, of course. Because without logical education that is easy to understand and more importantly, easy to implement, this is why our clients before they joined us and why many of the people, of course, maybe even listen to this, are struggling to find a solution once and for all to stay in shape around a busy lifestyle, business, career, family, children, all that type of stuff. So it's going to be a handful of questions I'm going to go through today because as I've said on many previous podcasts, The reason, from my experience, people don't know what to do is they don't know what to focus on and haven't got the right questions in their armor to ask themselves. So hopefully today's questions will help you evaluate where you are, what you need to do a lot better. And just to manage time on this podcast, I'm not going to be talking about anything to do with the impact of training stimulus and training volume today on actual weight loss. It's literally going to break down a tiny bit of mindset, food and movement. Because if you manage these two or three things effectively, it's impossible, actually impossible not to lose weight. So the first question you need to ask yourself is, How do you feel right now about your weight? Do you feel great? Do you feel okay? Or do you feel shit? You need to be really honest with yourself on how you actually feel about your weight or more so, how is your weight influencing how you feel? Because if you are overweight, There's no sugarcoating the fact that if you are overweight in relation to your expectation of what you would like to weigh, it's going to impact your mood and energy and confidence in some areas of your life. Whether it's in business, relationships, business meetings, whatever it is, it's going to impact you in some way. But where are you right now? Now, if you are choosing to listen to this podcast, I'm going to take a guess that you don't feel great about your weight. 
if you do feel great and you're just listening, fantastic, but there's a strong chance you would like to be a little bit lighter. Second question, where would you like to be in four weeks time? Or more importantly, what, where would you like to, how would you like to feel in four weeks time? Would you like to feel great about your weight? Would you like to feel okay about your weight? Or would you like to feel shit about your weight? Now you might <laughs> be thinking, why ever said, would you like to feel shit about your weight? Sometimes, like what baffles me with people is, they say they're unhappy with their weight, but they don't hit, hit, hit a nerve within themselves emotionally on how that's actually impacting them right now. And more importantly, how they would like to feel or not feel in four weeks time. And if you are currently overweight and it doesn't help how you feel, it, it'd be absolutely moronic to in four weeks time want to feel like shit. So even if you're currently feeling like shit about your weight, a great yardstick for you in four weeks time is to feel okay about your weight. Generally speaking, the more weight you feel you've got to lose, that's gonna probably dictate what you believe is possible in four weeks time. For example, if you've gotta lose 20 to 30 pounds, you're probably still not gonna feel great about your weight in four weeks time, but you could feel okay, or at least have momentum towards that. Third question. Why is it important to you to feel that way about your weight? Why is it important to you? If you can't articulate why it's important for you to weigh a certain weight, you're never going to implement the how or even the things I'm going to suggest you to do from today's podcast. I've said many times before, like, Motivation doesn't last. But if you can get crystal clear on the emotional deeper meaning behind being a certain weight, looking a certain way, you're going to be more disciplined to implement the things when motivation wanes. But what is your driving force? What's the who? What's the how? What's the why? And I'll encourage you to write as many different reasons why it's important for you to feel a certain weight about your body weight? What are the consequences of you being a certain weight on your life, personally, professionally, emotionally, maybe even financially? You need to attach emotional leverage and consequence. Number four, what is your current body weight on empty? As I said to our clients, the other day, your current body weight is the average body weight across the last seven to 14 days, depending on how often you weigh yourself. It's all about the averages. As I've explained on previous podcasts, there are so many different things that can imp impact how much your body weight is on a daily basis, depending on what time you go to bed, what time you eat, how much salt, water, all these different things that you may or may not have in your previous day or evening's meal. But what is your current body weight on empty? If our goal is to feel okay or great about our weight, would you agree that you need to have a pulse check on exactly what your weight is right now? Then the second part of that question is, where would you like to be in four weeks time? What would you like your body weight to be in four weeks time? For example, one of my clients, he wanted to drop eight pound in four weeks. That's a big ask, but at least it's a clear, definitive, tangible target that you can work towards. But what is your current body weight and where would you like it to be in four weeks time? And what is the difference? Is it two pounds? Is it three pounds? Is it four pounds? Is it five pounds? What is the actual number? This is where we're dealing with logic here. Next question is around food. I'm gonna go for food quantity, food quality, and movement, and we're done, okay? But I encourage you to listen to the rest of this podcast if you want a logical framework of how you can lose weight and create predictability with the outcome. 
food quantity, would you agree that there's a strong chance if you're not losing weight, you're eating too much food? So what is your current average daily calories across seven days? We've had a lot of clients before say, I'm, I'm sticking to you know, 2,000 calories. Then when you actually break it down, they might be having 2,000 calories Monday to Thursday, but then they're having 3,000, 4,000 per day, Friday to Sunday. That pushes the average daily calories up dramatically. But what are your current average daily calories? And as I said to our clients the other day, if you don't know, I encourage you to track your calories religiously for the next seven days. If you don't track your calories and your body weight is currently going up, even if you don't know your exact calories, you're eating more than your body needs in relation to your goal of losing weight. The mass do not lie. So once you've got a pulse check on your current average daily calories, will this take you to your next four-week goal? So that target you just that target you just put in the previous question with current body weight, ideal body weight in four weeks' time, will your current average daily calories take you towards your next four-week weight goal? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, what do your average daily calories need to be to hit your weight goal? As an absolute minimum, if your movement is on point, which I'll come to in a second, there's a strong chance you're going to have to eat at least 200 calories per day less as an absolute minimum to drop weight. But at least, at least pencil in a number that you can work towards. And you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. What is the difference with your current daily average calories in relation to what your calories need to be to lose weight. Is it 200? Is it 300? Is it 400? Is it 500? And if you aren't certain, just pick a number. Pick a number that at least you can test and see over the next seven days minimum. Then what will you actually do? So for example, if you know that you need to have two to 300 calories less than what you're currently doing to lose weight, what will you actually do to reduce the, the, the calories by that much? Looking at your food the last seven days, last 14 days, how could you easily lose two to 300 calories, for example, or whatever that number is? What are you eating that's consuming those calories that you could easily take away and you wouldn't even notice? Is it sauces? Is it dips? Is it something refined sugar, snack? And one alcoholic drink a day. But, but just logically look and think, how could I easily not eat that amount of calories? Then the next question we have is around food quality. Is your current food quality great, okay, or bad? Why is this so important? As I said to our clients on a Zoom the other day, you're going to make your job so much easier of managing lower calories if your calories are higher quality of calories. Why? You will have less cravings. You'll be more satiated from your food. And you'll re reduce the risk of when urges come along to overeat, especially sugar and processed food. So is your, is your food quality great, okay, or bad? And will this take you to, to your, your next four-week goal, yes or no? So looking at what you're currently doing now in relation to your food quality, what I mean by food quality, how much of it is, is it single-ingredient ingredient food? How much of it is processed? Is 80% real food, 20% processed and added sugar? Or is it 60, is it 50-50? Be brutally honest with yourself. It's my experience. It's extremely hard to be in a calorie deficit and, and, and operate on lower calories 
if a large proportion of your food is processed and refined sugar. What will you do to make your food great over the next four weeks? What will you start doing and what will you stop doing? Or a bit of both. But what is one thing you could do right now, like immediately, to improve your food quality? And looking at your food quality for the last week to two weeks, what could you stop doing that would make an immediate impact on the quality of your food? It's probably going to be a similar answer to the question before about food quantity. There's a strong chance that it's going to be something processed, hyperpalatable, something that you can't control yourself with once you have one or two, whether it's a drink, food, snack, that you can't stop eating when you, when you start it or it's gone in seconds but doesn't fill you up. Then lastly, movement. If you listen to this and you know that your food quality is on point, your food quantity is on point, but you're still not losing weight, it's going to be down to your movement. The maths don't lie. What is your current daily average steps? So if you were to look at your phone app on your phone or your garments, your, your, your whoops, your Apple Watches, whatever it is you use to track your steps, what is your current daily average steps? Is it 8,000, 6,000, 10,000, 12,000? And what, what do your average daily steps need to be to create more of a deficit? Is it 2,000 more than what you're currently doing? 3,000, 5,000? What's realistic? More importantly, what's the difference from how much you're currently moving to how much you need to move? And then what will you do? What will you do? Can you look at your calendar right now? Or where can you look in your calendar right now and easily factor in that extra movement that you need to do to shift the needle? These are really logical questions around food and movement to meet your weight. As I said, there's other things I covered in this PDF, but for me, if you did nothing else but really get granular on those few questions and have those clear outcomes and metrics of what is the calorie difference, what is the actual food, drink or both, that I could easily save that calorie difference and optimize food quality, and what is the difference with my movement that I could easily implement on a daily and weekly basis? And I guarantee you'd lose weight. Because insanity is doing the same, eating the same, moving the same, and expecting a different result. So if you would like this full PDF, or go into a little bit more context, and there's a few other things around training stimulus and sleep, for example, then please do not hesitate to drop me a message on Kurt Miller on Instagram or LinkedIn. But stop overcomplicating fat loss and weight loss. It's not that complicated. If we're not losing weight, take responsibility, get clear on how this is going to improve your life so you've got consequence and a desire to actually eat what you need to eat, move as much as you need to move to take you to where you want to be and more importantly, how you want to feel. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.